My name is Haley Denham. For my DEI Inclusive Policy Design Project, I made a testimonial video for the Arts Education for All Act, which was introduced in 2021. This project aims to use power tools, asset-based approaches through public narrative, and lived experience as a catalyst for change. Before I begin my testimonial, I want to share some information about me and what brings me to Heller, DEI, and what informs my positionality in this topic. First, I use she, her, hers pronouns. I was born and raised and currently reside in Lynn, Massachusetts. My undergraduate degrees are in psychology and dance from UMass Amherst. My concentration in the MPP program is child, youth, and family policy, and I am interested in how disability intersects with this lens. Alongside graduate school, I work as a dance educator at a local dance school in Newton, Massachusetts. I have also had intimate experiences with the education system as a teaching assistant in public and private schools in Massachusetts, working primarily with students with disabilities aged 3 to 22. For this project, I am emphasizing the importance of including arts, but most specifically dance, as a mechanism for inclusive policy design, advocating specifically for the Arts Education for All Act. Within this project, I have three primary goals. My first goal is to use my public narrative as a tool to testify for the Arts Education for All Act in order to diversify the populace that can access arts education and to mobilize support from a target audience. In the case of my public narrative, the audience is educators in the state of Massachusetts. My second goal is to advocate for policy inclusive of disabled individuals to enhance disability justice and rights. Using a quote from Young, justice addresses the way social institutions inhibit or liberate people. The arts are a vessel for liberation for people with disabilities. As Cindy Cohen laid out in our final lecture, the arts are inviting and aesthetic. The arts are used for community and peace building, and they have the potential to shift mindsets. My final goal is to step into my own power and use my own lived experience and expertise in the arts to garner support for an inclusive policy. To quote Professor Alexandra Pineros Shields, when people give birth to their own power, they participate in the creative force of the universe. My participation in the creative force of the universe as a dancer spans my entire lifetime. This intimate experience allows me to seek justice and foster spaces that encourage all humans to actively work towards liberation. Before I testify my support for the AEFA, I want to acknowledge my standpoint as a person with intimate aesthetic experiences in the arts, both formally and informally. I have been a dancer since the age of three. Dance was the first tool I understood as a strategy for inclusion and participatory action. Scholarship and personal experience has intertwined to inform my perspective on arts education and the role it plays in child development and community engagement. My membership in this community influences my work on this project. Each Wednesday evening, about 30 of us gathered in the Bangs Community Center in the heart of bustling Amherst, Massachusetts. Starting with our rose and thorns, we set the stage to be in each other's presence with no distractions. Games, crafts, and conversations filled the open and spacious room for two hours. Yet these activities did not engage him. Tucked away to the side, Hugh emptied his pockets, filled to the brim with miscellaneous items from home. Newspaper clippings, toy cars, informational brochures, it wasn't clear why he was not participating with everyone else. Once we began playing music on our portable speaker, he started engaging with everyone else. To the cadence of Unforgettable by French Montana, Hugh pulled a dark blue flat cap and bright orange holographic sunglasses from his overflowing pockets, put them on, and began dancing. His musicality was immaculate. He moved so well to the music. A huge smile gleamed ferociously from his face. Dance is his way of communicating with everyone. Hugh and I danced excitedly each week, laughing our time together away. Hugh is an adult with disabilities who is minimally verbal. 
His mode of communicating is through movement. As a dancer myself, we built an interpersonal connection that went beyond many relationships that I have rooted in conversation. Over time, he started sharing with me about his childhood and his experiences of living with disabilities. And it all started with dance, with the natural movements of our body. The service learning program where we met, the Boltwood Project, fosters inclusion and relationship building by creating sites for undergraduate students and Amherst community members with disabilities to connect with each other weekly. Dance was not among the tools that Boltwood leaders offered to nurture safe and positive environments. Yet, it offered the most powerful window into building a connection with you. It has transcended beyond the four years that I was at UMass. Through my relationship with Hugh, I decided that dance was an educational tool that needed to be more accessible in schools. So, it became a catalyst for the creation of my exploratory undergraduate thesis, investigating the effects of incorporating different modes of dance into physical education curricula for adolescents with autism. Much to my excitement, the outcome of my pilot study showed positive effects on energy expenditure and affect for the group of students I danced with at the Boston Higashi School in Randolph. The hard sciences, social sciences, humanities, and lived experience brought together clearly show that there are extremely positive effects of dance for youth in schools and adults in the community. This commenced my journey to policy as an avenue to protecting arts education. As people who care about dance and the arts, we know the power that it holds for the youth we work with every day. It promotes physical engagement and mental health benefits. It is something we, as educators, must have in our classrooms to encourage exploration. The arts create space for communication without the necessity of words. Dance is a nonverbal way of promoting change and fostering inclusive environments while being all-encompassing of humans and their intersectional identities. Even as babies, we find natural movement and create shapes and wiggle to music. Dance is humanistic. Our everyday movements of brushing our teeth, cooking a meal, rolling into bed are all expressions of dance. Students, like you, might not have had the tools in their classroom to find their preferred mode of communication through the arts, and it is our job to provide that. We must work together to ensure that this exploration is accessible to developing children and adolescents in our classrooms each day to support and nurture love of movement and the arts. The following video encapsulates the importance of arts education. NYU has a strong emphasis on social justice practices and really um, through the arts becoming critical beings in society, you know, um, being active participants who want to change the world for the better. There are lots of kids, maybe I was like that also, that just can't handle sitting in a classroom doing things that have a right and wrong answer. It's sort of an escape, but it's also an, a way for your brain to function a different way that you can like, solve things using color or using shapes. That idea of allowing children to express themselves creatively and allowing people to really be who they are so that they can like realize their potential just reinforced to me like why I'm here, like why we're in this program. I think that's the main goal of this program is to really implement critical thinking skills um, into students so they can actually take a cause that they're passionate about and actually implement a change. Despite the fact that movement is all around us in our daily lives, the United States is quick to cut budgets for supporting arts programming and arts education in schools. The Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's budget is approximately $5 billion, and arts programs are the first to be cut from this chunk of money prioritizing STEM programs. In New York City, the mayor cut the funding for arts education by approximately 70% for the 2021-2022 school year. 
Most recently, the Arts and Education Roundtable in New York City has responded to cuts by coining the phrase, it starts with the arts, which is an effort to equitably re-energize the New York City school systems with arts amidst the pandemic to reaffirm the importance of arts in student well-being. Here's what Chi Ose, a New York City council member, has to say. This is something that will bring, um, you know, our city back. Um, it's, it's mental health. It's, um, you know, entertainment. It's uh, opportunities to engage in, in, in different types of works that um, may not be traditional uh, to the sense of, you know, everyday New Yorkers, but are, are traditional to the sense of, of us um, that are a part of this cultural community. So um, I'm here to be a champion for arts and education for all. Uh, Kimberly uh, said it right at the start of this call. It, it does start with the arts. Um, and I know that to be true through, through my own experience. And I know uh, many of us in this call know that to be true as well. So uh, our future uh, is, is, is only going to excel in, in a more fabulous way if we are funding and prioritizing arts um, and education for, for all of our students. So um, you have an ally here. Thankfully, the 2015 reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act to the Every Student Succeeds Act added arts and music as critical components of a well-rounded education. Yet there has been minimal action to provide safeguards for arts program to not be entirely uprooted each fiscal year. Especially amid the COVID-19 pandemic, youth across the United States need creative outlets to work through and cope with complicated emotions and experiences. Through movement, art, and music, we can begin to take a more nuanced look at the human experience and advocate for policy inclusive of disabled individuals to enhance disability justice and rights. Like you, the arts provide an outlet for connecting with people you cannot connect with in a different setting or using words. Please join me for a phone bank at Brandeis University in Waltham at the Heller School in room G51 next Wednesday, May 4th, 2022 at noon as we call Massachusetts House members urging their support for the Arts Education for All Act. This bill will save arts education and provide security and access to the arts for K-12 through graders and incarcerated youth across the United States. We need this bill to pass the House and we can only do it with your help. We need the arts. Will you join me next Wednesday afternoon at Brandeis to ensure the safety of arts education for the youth of Massachusetts?